This is the new Kia Proceed, and it's a little bit like a second-hand Mercedes-Benz CLA. You see, it's similar money as a second-hand CLA. Yeah, it starts from just over £23,000. But with this car, you'll get seven years warranty. It's obviously new, whereas one of these is going to be out of warranty. So, yeah, a bit dangerous. Now, if you want to see how much you can save on one of these cars, or any car for that matter, just click on the pop-out banner it's in the top right corner of the screen, or the link below the video to go to CarWow, because you can save an average of £2,500 off one of these Kias. Let's start this review by talking about the Proceeds design. Now, I don't just think this is the best-looking Kia ever. I think it's one of the best-looking cars you can currently buy right now. It's really smart for a, a simple family car. It looks really, really sporty. Now, as you move up the range, you get things like red trim on the front bumper like that. You get LED headlights. You get larger alloy wheels. Although the standard car looks pretty smart as well. But the best bit is this, this kind of side profile. It just looks so right. They have done a cracking job. And then around the back, it's sort of Porsche-ish, isn't it, with this kind of light bar. But yeah, once again, a great looking car. Now this is the GT, so it has this extra bit here, like this diffuser effect. I'm really surprised, but you know, that sloping roof line, surely it does hamper rear passenger space. Well, let's just see. Is it form over function? Well, thankfully, look at this. If I sit up dead straight, I have that much headroom. And people over six foot will have enough headspace. The knee room's all right as well. So it's not too much of a compromise at all. It's not perfect though. So I can't slide my feet under the chair in front if it's low down. So you feel a bit cramped in the foot well. Also, these seats don't provide much under thigh support. I feel like I'm putting all my weight just on my buttocks. That will get a bit annoying on a longer journey. Now, if you need to carry three people in the back at once, well, there is only a minor hump in the floor, so it's okay for people's feet. This central seat is a real narrow little perch, and it's quite high up, and then headroom is compromised. But the biggest issue is the fact that it's quite a narrow body, and so if you've got three adults in the back, no shoulder room at all, it can be really quite uncomfortable. Kids with three in the back will be fine, though. In terms of other areas of practicality, well, look at this. You fold that down, you've got a couple of cup holders. Big wow. I'd much rather have some through loading so you could carry two people in the back on either side and then something like skis or what have you, but you can't. You'd have to fold down one of these seats and then people would have to squish into this area here, which wouldn't be great. Another thing that isn't great as well is the fact it's quite dark and gloomy. This is probably the biggest problem with a pro seat. That sloping roof line means that the back windows are quite small. One saving grace is though, I need to turn it on. As I was saying, one saving grace is though. I need to. Okay. One saving grace is though. Kias are annoying. One saving grace is though. Hey, it works. The windows go all the way down. Got a lost interest in that after a while. <laughs> wow, again. Anyway, now when it comes to being a child seat, Ice fixed angle points are really easy to get to because you have fold down covers, you don't have to remove them. Also, the doors do open wide enough to get a seat in. The problem is, is if you're trying to fit one of those rear facing child seats, you have to move that front passenger seat forward quite a bit to fit it in. And then it's gonna be uncomfortable for the person in the front. If there's no one sat there, it's not a problem. A normal child seat though is absolutely fine. If you have two child seats side by side, yeah, there's no way you're really gonna be fitting anyone in between them. In terms of over there is a practicality, you've got some nets there where you can keep your Kia brochure, like we have. And that's about it. Bit of a shame there are no USB charging points for mobile devices in the back. That is a bit of an oversight, if you ask me. Let's move into the front and see if things get a little better in terms of connectivity there. Well, thankfully, it is way, way better. So we've got an AUX in down there for old fashioned connectivity. There's USB there. There's a 12 volt there, and underneath what looks like a 12 volt cover is another USB. Don't know why they do that, but they do, and it's fine. So, plenty of connectivity here in the front. And that brings me on to this car's equipment list. The Proceed range kicks off with the GT line, and that gets an 8 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and built in satellite navigation. There's also a little screen between the dials. And then there's the dual zone climate control, heated front seat, and even a heated steering wheel. It also gets plenty of safety kits such as auto emergency braking, lane departure and driver attention warning, and high beam assistant. The next level up is the GT Line S, which gets a powered tailgate. 
and this car doesn't have it because it's the GT. The GTS model also gets 10-way electrically adjustable front seats and adaptive cruise control. Let's continue this review by talking about this car's infotainment system. So the operating system itself is very easy to use. The on-screen buttons are a good size, the menus are logical, and inputting a postcode is easy. Although adding a waypoint is a bit more of a faff. Now you can't pinch and zoom on the map like you can with most touch screens. Still, at least you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Overall, the infotainment is pretty good, but it's not the most advanced system out there. Same applies for this little screen in between the two dials. There's not actually that much that it can show, and you can't configure it like you can on an Audi A1. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi A1, then just click up there on the pop-out banner. Right, now let's talk about this car's interior design. So the dash is actually taken from the normal seed, and while it looks okay, it just doesn't have the same flamboyance as the exterior design. It's all right though, and the Pro Seed is lifted slightly over the normal seed by some black piano shiny trim here, some chrome accents here and there, down here on the doors and stuff like that. And you get some chromey bits here, as on the window switches on the steering wheel, which do help a bit, and of course around the dials there. But it's not amazing. Quality is pretty good, so all the controls do feel pretty nice and sturdy. And this, shake the centre console, it doesn't move, it is robust. Well done for that Kia. And everything, of course, being a Kia, is pretty sensibly laid out. So you've got your driving stuff down there, you've got your climate control stuff here, there's your safety stuff there, you can control lots of stuff on the steering wheel. Yeah, all simple, dead easy to use. Driving position is fine as well. Plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and the driver's seat. Plenty of headroom as well, so you can jack it up really high. Even if you're tall, you're not going to have a problem, and you can slide it all the way back quite a long way as well. Big or small, you will be fine in this Kia. There's plenty of cubby spaces as well, so I'm going to talk you through them. Big door bins. Got two bottles in there. Decent enough cubby under there. There's some cup holders here. So a smaller one for smaller bottles, and a larger one for larger bottles. Perfect. Also, you have a place for your mobile phone up there as well. On certain models, that's wireless charging. The glove box is just about decent too, and there's a weird little cubby space just here where you can kind of keep bars, and I suppose you could keep stuff under there as well if you really want to. You have a place for your glasses up there, and now I'm not going to be able to see a thing. Oh dear, shall I just continue the review anyway like this? And my God, look at that. Good job the mirror's big, because now with my glasses, I can't see bugger all. Yeah, it is me. So. Finally, let's talk about the Proceeds boot. So, according to the brochure, it's pretty much 600 litres in capacity, which is like 30% bigger than the normal seed hatchbacks. And it's bigger than most cars, actually. However, when you look at it, you go, yeah, that is big, but it doesn't seem like 600 litres. And I think that's because the total includes these underfloor storage areas, which are good in a way but they mean that you can't quite fill the boot up with big boxes like you might expect to on a car with a boot that's 600 litres in capacity. But what have we got in here? And what kind of cubby spaces? There is a little hoover here, which is no use at all because there's no 12 volt socket to plug it into. Maybe that's why there's all these bits in the boot of the car. Yeah, whoever has this car is a bit of a messy person. There's some more storage here. So a jet washer for washing the car, which they haven't used. There's another storage area just here. There's some, what the heck is going on? And under here, there's some more. This is all a bit weird, really. And what's all this stuff under here as well? It's all a bit odd. What else we got under here? Okay, right. I don't know, whoever's been running this car has some odd habits. What's it, ah, that's useful at last. I might use this in a bit. And there's some other more useful bits in this car. So you've got some tie down hooks there, somewhere to hang your shopping off. But it's a bit annoying that you can only fold down the rear seats by leaning in. Actually, I tell a lie, on the top spec car, you get some release handles in the boot and the rear seats split three ways rather than two, like on this car. So when you fold the seats down, you get a nice flat load area and then you can just slide things pretty much right to the front like that. In terms of what you can actually fit in this boot, there's room for two large boxes, along with 12 small ones. Don't expect to be able to fit much on top of these, however, given the sloping roof line. 
Mind you, you'll be able to fit a bike in no problem at all with both wheels attached. Put the seats back into place and install the load cover and space is relatively tight. You see, only two large suitcases will fit into the load floor. Alternatively, you'll find room for a single large suitcase along with a baby buggy and a set of golf clubs. So yeah, this car looks good and it's practical, but I could say the same about a Peugeot 508. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, just click up there on the pop-out banner or follow the link below the video. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. The interior grab handle for the door is actually cut out of the armour, so when you're driving along, your elbow just ends up in the hole, which makes it far more uncomfortable. When you try to shut the boot with the handle, you can't quite get enough leverage to shut it properly. It's kind of... Oh, that, is that it? No. Did it! At night, the switches for the mirror controls aren't illuminated, so you end up prodding around then press the wrong button, fold the mirrors in so you can't see anything. This car plays fake engine sounds through its stereo speakers to make it seem more sporty, but... You can clearly tell the noise is coming through the speaker on the dash. It's so lame. The rear camera is so exposed it gets covered in road grime, so you constantly have to clean it to be able to see anything in the image. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. You can program the car's key so that when you stand near the tailgate, it recognises that you want the boot to open and it automatically opens. So you don't have to do any of that kind of waving of your foot underneath, which often doesn't work on many other cars. I'd illustrate it to you now on this one, but like I explained before, it doesn't have a powered tailgate. So I'll just yeah, pretend. Brilliant. The Pro CGT comes with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 sporty tyres for improved handling. Now, we don't even get tyres as good as this on our long-term Audi RS3, and that's way more expensive. Rather than having to cycle through some menus, you can just turn the lane departure warning off easily there at the press of a button, which is ideal if you like to take the racing line on a twisty back road. As with every kit, you get an industry-leading seven-year warranty for added Ooh, peace of mind check this out for some fairly smart packaging look how the low cover fits nicely underneath the boot floor brilliant makes me wanna no don't do it stop no don't sorry okay let's talk about engine choices on this kia proceed so you can get two petrols, a 1.4 litre or a 1.6 litre turbo. So the 1.4 can do 0 to 60 in nine seconds. The 1.6, which is what this car is, can do it in seven seconds because it has 200 horsepower. Yeah. You can also get a 1.6 litre diesel. They can do 0 to 60 in 10 seconds and should return around 54 miles per gallon. Now, all cars are available with either a six speed manual gearbox or a seven speed automatic. This particular car is the 1.6 litre petrol automatic GT model. If I put the details into the car wow configurator, I've got an offer back for that much, which is quite a decent saving. Now, if you want to check out the car wow configurator on this car or any car for that matter, just click on the pop out banner up there or follow the link below the video to give it a go. This Proceed is pretty nice to drive on the motorway, feels secure at speed, you can just bomb it along, no problem at all. The only complaint I do have is that you do get a bit of noise from the tyres, a little bit on the loud side. You see, this thing may look like a Mercedes CLA, but it doesn't feel quite as luxurious. In fact, if you click up there on the pop-out banner, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the Mercedes. Now, if you're cruising along at 50 miles an hour and you need to overtake somebody, it can take a little bit longer than you might like if you've got the 1.4 litre petrol or the 1.6 litre diesel. Not a problem with this 1.6 litre petrol though, because look, I'm going to floor it. Gearbox kicks down pretty well and we're off. And it's got quite a bit of punch and noise. And there we go, that was 70 like that, really quick. That takes a strain out of driving on the motorway. As for economy, well, doing that will not help it, but this car is still averaging 38 miles per gallon, which I think is pretty decent. One of the first things you need to know about the Kia Pro Seed is that it has stiffer suspension compared to the normal Seed and you feel that a little bit when you're in town going over bumps. They're just a little bit more jarring. Other than that, it's rather pleasant. Steering's light, braking's good. Also, this car has a good turning circle. 
It's tighter than something like a Volkswagen Golf Estate, so that's really good for doing U-turns. I like that about it. There is something I don't like so much though. The manual gearbox can feel a bit notchy, then there's the automatic, and that can feel a bit jerky. Now you really notice that when you're doing parking maneuvers, as I'm about to do now, so, yeah, having an auto is always easier than a manual because you're not faffing around with your clutch, but then it can get a little bit hesitant when you're trying to do the fine maneuvering not to crash into something. Actually, parking this car is generally quite easy because you've got the parking camera as standard. Really, really does help. Now, there it is. See, it's a bit, whoa, a little bit jerky when you're just trying to ease forward, but got that into space. And the only real problem with the visibility is the back window is quite small. That's it. The rest of it's actually pretty good. That was one of my better parking attempts, <laughs> if I do say so myself. It does all come down to luck, but the car did help me out. That was a massive contradiction, Matthew. It can't all go down to luck and the car helping me out. It's a bit of both. Finally then, let's try this car on a twisty road. So I'm gonna put it into sports mode. Now being the GT model, it has stiffer suspension over the normal car. And I think I'm gonna change gears myself using the paddles. Actually, the front end grips pretty well. It does all right, you know, this thing. If you want it to, it can move around beneath you and you can get it kind of hooning a bit. And with the car in sports, obviously you've got a bit more weight on the steering and a sharper throttle response. And it is actually quite good. Only when you start to run wide does the stability control start to just nip away and tidy the car up. It's not quite as much fun as a Ford Focus, but I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised. So then, what's my verdict on the Kia? Proceed, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Proceed. It's great looking and it's good value. It's just that some normal estate cars are more practical and better to drive. And it's a little bit like a second-hand Mercedes. I have a shooting brake. Driver attention, warning, and me doing it again. You don't have to cycle through. Yeah. Ooh, peace of mind. Following the link below on